Okay. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm really excited to start this morning uh, or late afternoon in Kenya with, uh, with Josek from the Kenyan National Library. He will introduce himself in a minute. Um, we do these community calls um, every about every month with P2PU, and we try to record them so everybody can hear them later on. Um, We've hosted different calls on uh, on digital literacy, on uh, citizenship uh, literacy, uh, ESL learning, and now we're going to be talking about empowering volunteers, uh, so supporting volunteers to to run their own learning circles. Um, so without that, uh, I'd like to pass it on to our presenter from Kenya uh, today. So. Um, and just in terms of uh, logistics, um, on the right, on the l top left corner, there's a, a blue bar and it says chat. If you have any questions at all, feel free to add in, add questions while the presentation is going on. We can respond to them during. Um, and then after present, after Yosek's presentation, we'll, we'll have a QA. and a uh, We'll ask him, feel free to ask him any more questions that you wish. Um, and then we'll open it up, kind of open up discussion about how learning circles are running for you or any other questions you might have for, for running learning circles in your community. So with that, I pass it on to Josek. Uh, thank you, Nicole. So I was saying my name is Josek Meolala. I work with the Kenya National Library Service. Uh, that is uh, in Akuru branch. Uh, my area is ICT. And uh, I also facilitate learning circle in Akuru. Uh, it's over here now. And maybe before I start, uh, uh, I have my co-facilitator who is the head of the branch. Uh, as you can see on the uh, slides, uh, we have uh, Madam Maybe I can just give a second to herself. And then uh, at the back, you can see we also have the uh, learners and also the, the volunteers. Because the day uh, we're going to talk about the uh, volunteer, the uh, empowering volunteers. So we have some, and also the learners of the uh, learning service. So, Purity, please, you can say hi. Hi, everyone. Purity is my name. We will be presenting with Joseph today on Empowering Volunteers, the Youth Year to Year program. Welcome on board. Well, great. I think now you've heard from Purity. Uh, we'll be working together uh, with her uh, for this uh, session. And, uh, maybe uh, we're going to start now, and I want to take you through uh, how we can empower volunteers and what the volunteers have been doing, so what are they are doing in uh, our library. Well, so uh, today's topic we are going to tackle uh, on empowering volunteers to lead. Nicole, just go back to Oh, sorry, go. Sorry. Empowering volunteers to lead peer-to-peer -peer, uh, program. And then uh, uh, I think we have introduced ourselves so you can go to the next one. So uh, we start by basically defining what is a volunteer. And uh, according to NCBO, this an organization, uh, we say term volunteer is someone who spends time and faith accomplishing a certain task or a duty with the aim of benefiting someone that they are not closely related. So this somebody who just spends his time and does not require any form of payment maybe to accomplish a certain task or a duty that uh, is going actually to benefit someone or the community at large. When you see that photo there, uh, when we introduced the learning circle one year ago, and we have different uh, stakeholders that uh, are coming from the community of Nakuru. Uh, we have also our director and other key stakeholders. So I'll be explaining more about that as we move. Uh, what is empowering volunteers? This is uh, giving the volunteers responsibility along with authority and resources to accomplish their mission. So the key terms here is uh, uh, giving them responsibility and authority. So these are the people that are supposed to be given the responsibility and then they are supposed also to be given some kind of powers, the authority. And also you have to equip them with the resources, maybe resources such as maybe if they are doing kind of a training, you have to ensure that these people, they have maybe the, the computers are set up, there is availability of the internet, if they are using the, uh, the whiteboard, ensure that the whiteboard is there, the, the, the 
mark fence and there so that at least you create a good conducive environment for them. Now, uh, we have to ask ourselves, who can volunteer? Can just anybody be a volunteer? So, the people who can volunteer, one, uh, according to uh, Ken Les Nakuru, we've tried uh, the, the beneficiaries of this program, the beneficiaries of the learning program. They are the key people that help in terms of doing the voluntary work. Because these are the people who have been trained, they know how learning circle work. It's, uh, they know, they, they, they have already the expectation or the objective of what the learning circle is, uh, is, is uh, supposed to, to achieve. So when you engage such people, they are able actually to, uh, to run the learning circles uh, very well. Then we also have the university students or college students. These are the people maybe who they have skills in different fields. So maybe uh, you, you are training or you are, you are taking a learning circle course, a short course on maybe uh, computer science or HTML or programming. You can not just bring anybody, but when you bring maybe some of the students who at least they have the skills, they have been trained on how they can uh, do programming in their various universities, it becomes very easier for them when you engage them because they are able to interact with those who maybe they have not gone through the program and they are able to help them, to assist them and to invite that all of them, the learning circle will be good because everybody at least will be able to do it understand and also you realize us as facilitator we are not supposed to uh, like to train or to teach and so you realize maybe in some other areas we don't have the adequate skills but when you bring people the volunteers from the universities who they have skills in certain areas you realize these are the people who are going to assist the rest those uh, some of the learners so that at least they can be able to we also engage the youth groups, uh, uh, and that these are these are uh, in a cruise scenario like maybe when we want to, to spread the message to the people, we are able to use these young people, uh, maybe the leaders of the religion, the churches, and all that. When we go there, we bring them on board, and they are able actually to spread the message about the learning circle. And in so doing, they really really help us to, to bring more people, to bring more learners those who are interested to take the, the learning circle. The library users, as uh, we are sitting in the library, and, uh, and these are the people who at least for daily basis they come to use the library, to utilize the resources of the library. And in so doing, they have been able to learn about uh, learning circle and you realize majority of them are willing to come and maybe help to volunteer to run the learning circle in different Dimension. So we should also focus on our library users, those who come in the library. Some of them they are skilled they are in different ways, and when you engage them, they are able actually to, to help in running the, the learning circles. School leavers, yeah, there are those who maybe uh, because they didn't have the school fees or some of the other reasons. They are great. So let's proceed. I don't know. Uh, I was just explaining about uh, who can volunteer. We had talked about the beneficiaries of the learning circle. We heard you, we heard you up until school school leavers and people who can't pay the fee. Okay, the school leavers. Then last we do have uh, the opinion leaders. Uh, they can also assist in terms of doing the voluntary service. Well, uh, this way maybe we engage uh, key people in the community, uh, like maybe the chief, like the, when we started this learning circle, we called for a session of the key leaders, and one of them was uh, the famous chief who uses uh, uh, the social media to, to convey the message to the community, uh, specifically uses the Twitter. So we engaged him, and he was able actually to tweet to the community, and that means that the message about the learning circle in the library was, uh, it reached many people, and that, that's one way that we use actually to to bring other people in the library. When you engage the community leaders, yeah, they, are, they are able to reach many people, and therefore uh, the message will reach many people, and it means that uh, people will come to the library and they are able to take the, the learning circle. Right? So, uh, how can you empower volunteers? 
how can you empower volume? Maybe I can just ask, uh, just go back, please. Uh, one slide back. Yes, how can you how can you empower volunteers? And maybe this is a question that I want to pose to the audience, uh, maybe to help uh, to make them also active. Uh. Maybe they can share me on uh, methods or ways that they can use uh, for them to empower volunteers in their different lives. So maybe I can hear uh, your suggestions on what do you think we can use or what are some of the methods that we can put in place so that we empower uh, the volunteers. Yes, please. Yes, the second on your side, please. Because of whatever engaged in our volunteers on my side, and it would be good for your volunteers to tell us the experience, how you engage them, so that we'll be able to get uh, what you've been doing to them, so that we apply the same amount of libraries. Thank you. That is called from Kazungu, Kenya National Library. Uh, that is Kuala. Uh, yeah, he's talking more about uh, to get to know the, the experience of these volunteers so that you see how well or what can they do in terms of uh, doing the voluntary service. Uh, and maybe any other idea? I think uh, I think one thing that I, I thought of, uh, Joseph, was uh, well. David Johnson was mentioning here. He says, "Have the volunteer choose the course for the learning circle." Yeah, I think that's an important point. That's a good opportunity, David. One th thought I thought was, you know, I think role modeling whenever you can. I think oh, someone put me on mute. <laughs> I think role modeling whenever you can, like making sure that you have the you give the opportunity for people to speak during the learning circle and at, at many different opportunities. So it's not making sure that you have other opportunities, not just organizing the learning circle specifically, but you know whether it's facilitating the learning circle, uh, helping set up, helping close the learning circle, making sure that everyone feels that they can also do this themselves. And also at the end, maybe even just asking, you know, that uh, asking if people want to do this themselves next time, so something like that might, might be helpful. Have you found that too? Is that your experience as well, Joseph? Well, yes, it's good that, that uh, we also allow the participants and the uh, volunteers actually to take part. We don't just take control of everything. Maybe you can assign them to maybe somebody to facilitate maybe questions, uh, maybe to do some uh, something at least so that we we all we all involve them during the, the sessions and all that. So we don't just do any, everything as a facilitator, but we also need to at least uh, engage these people, let them share their ideas, their views. Uh, so that at least they can feel their part and parcel of the program. Yes. So uh, those are some of the things, and also maybe uh, I might request uh, uh, Nicole, please. Yep. Nicole, let's move. Yes. Uh, next slide. Yep. Great. So uh, uh, maybe just to add on what uh, uh, the participants have shared, you realize that empowering volunteers one you have to understand what it means to be a volunteer and you have to understand what is the role of these volunteers when they are volunteering what, what, what are the expectations of that and they appreciate their time these are the people who leave their own work to come and assist so you as a facilitator you need to appreciate the time that these people they have taken maybe to travel some of them even they travel they use pastor in order to come in the library so that they can assist they use sometimes their, even uh, their resources. Then you have also to eliminate their frustrations. Don't be seen as that the stumbling block or the one who is maybe, uh, being difficult. So ensure that you are trying to enable a good working environment and then try to run away from maybe issues and frustrating them. Let them be happy and enjoy what they are doing. Then give up some control. Delegate duties, I think uh, Nicole has said this, you have also to delegate some roles. Don't just uh, take control of everything, but be assign them some responsibilities. The other point is you have to allow them to work, take their ideas and transform them into tasks. Whatever the ideas that these people have, please ensure that at least you are able to offer your assistance so that uh, at the end of the day they are able to, uh, to achieve their objectives. They are able at least to achieve what they desire, they are able to smile. And so ensure that you are able to offer that kind of support to ensure that at the end of the day, these people are able to, to achieve what they had in their mind. So you have to support them. Guide their effort and supply 
their, uh, their resources. So uh, you have to be there to provide some guidance in all that. Uh, whichever resources that they might require that I've said, maybe the, the internet, maybe the laptop, the projector, the flip charts, you have to ensure that all these resources are there and can assist them. Right. Uh, then the other point, motivate yourself to, to motivate. You yourself, you have to motivate yourself. You don't just uh, bring people and maybe you introduce the learning circle, maybe you do it as if you have been forced to do this and this. Ensure that at least you motivate yourself. Others motivate you, volunteers, volunteers will learn from you. Let these people learn how you, learn, you run your learning circle. From that, they are able actually to add more skills in terms of being the military uh, because they are learning from So when you conduct your learning circle in a very good way, it means even the volunteers, they are able to follow them, the steps. Show enthusiasm or interact with them. Make sure that at least you are able to engage them, interact with them, talk with them, share your views with them. Uh, sure, maybe if there are some issues and problems, ensure that you are there with them and you are able to. Uh, the other point is be friendly and open to dialogue with them. And, uh, befriend them. Uh, I've said you have that conversation with them. Meet frequently with the volunteers. Ensure that at least you, maybe on a weekly basis you are able to interact with them. You are able to meet them. So don't just leave them to do their work and then maybe like a man is not met them. Meet them to hear their views, their challenges, and maybe those ones that you are able to talk to see a way forward on how you can solve such uh, challenges. Then be a good listener. Give them also the opportunity to talk as you listen. Don't just dictate everything. Maybe they want to talk everything. Give them that opportunity. Listen from them. Uh, hear what they have to say. Maybe what are their suggestions on how we can improve our learning circles and all that. Concern and respect their opinion. When they give their views, don't overrule or just say maybe these views are not good and all that, or maybe you want everything to go your way because you are a facilitator. You have to be concerned and respect uh, their opinion, even maybe they are not good opinion, but you should maybe respect it and see how you can address those uh, uh, opinions in a way that they will not feel that maybe you can overlook from them. Then recognize their I have to recognize their effort. Say thank you. Very, very important. These people at least even no volunteer, no support, maybe they don't earn salary. You are not paying them. But just take your time. Uh, appreciate them. Say thank you. Uh, drop a thank you note. Email just to appreciate what they did. Uh, to motivate them. Uh, give them a telephone call. Communicate with them. Uh, recognize them during the meetings, like uh, when you look at, at that photo there, you realize uh, that is the uh, the director of Kenya National Library Service, the one with the microphone. And uh, on the first photo, we have one of uh, the volunteers who uh, volunteered during the, uh, the interview skills uh, learning circle. And the second uh, photo, we have also a volunteer who is called uh, Chris White. Uh, he has been assisting us to run the HTML classes. And actually, up to date, he's still doing that today. He has a class. class. So uh, you have actually to recognize. So to recognize these people. When, the, when you look at that photo, uh, that is the, uh, a graduation ceremony for the uh, those who have taken the learning circle, the, the learners. And now the director was appreciating them, and you see he's recognizing the volunteers uh, for the good work that they were able. They were able to. So what are some of the benefits of empowering? Yeah, when we say that it creates a greater impact in the community, when you empower uh, the volunteers, there is a, that impact that will be felt within the community. You know, these people, they come, uh, they know they understand the community better than us, the facilitators, because we bring them from the, uh, the community within. So when they understand the community, it means they are able even to go to the community, talk to the community and tell them that in the library we are doing ABCD. We have this program of which can, can be of 
great benefit to yourself. When you engage them, most likely that it will be failed in the community, and that means that uh, this, uh, the message about the learning circle reach many people, and may, more beneficiaries will, will turn up. Then it adds credibility to the program. Yeah? That credibility, because it's, it's not, we, we don't own it ourselves. How the volunteers, you empower them. And these people, you say that they are, they, they, they are people from the community. So when it means that the entire community is owning this, this program. It's a competitive one out there, and other professionals are doing it. Can we afford it? Uh, can we afford not to? So you realize that everybody now, everywhere in the world, uh, uh, it's about uh, being voluntary service and empowerment things. Everybody is doing it. So why should we not do it? So it's another way to appreciate that us, we are also not left behind, but at least we are able to compete with the, with the society to achieve the, the objective. Then assist, uh, they assist you to plan for the future. Focus further. Yeah? When you bring, you empower this, group, at least you are able to have uh, the long-term projections. You are able to plan for the future. Uh, then reach more people. Of course, these people that have been empowered, they live in the community, they understand the community better, and therefore it's very easy for, for us to reach uh, many people within, within the community because of empowering uh, these uh, volunteers. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. Thank you. So, and then they support facilitators to achieve the objective and uh, the mission of both learning circles and uh, your institution. So when you get these people, uh, when you, you empower them, at least most likely you are able to achieve your objectives. And also, the objective of you as uh, of the learning circle and also the institution. For instance, in our case, we have been able to uh, achieve uh, one of the, uh, our mission and our objective. Last week, uh, our library was among it was the best library in the Nakataba uh, Lawyer Awards of the year 2017. So we were the best public library. Uh, it's because of these volunteers, they were able actually to come on board and assist us to run programs such as the Learning Circle. So when we empower them, at least more, you are you see you are able to achieve uh, the objective of both the, the Learning Circle and the institution. Then raise the awareness about learning circle to the community. They are able actually to, everybody, uh, they'll go out, go, they'll be empowered, they'll go out and they'll talk more about the learning circle to the community and now it creates that kind of awareness. Then promote community engagement and partnership. So uh, there is that kind of, uh, you engage the community uh, you partner with different stakeholders like the churches eh, so that at least you can get more uh, volunteers there, you can also get uh, uh, more learners of the program there. Uh, and uh, that's because uh, these volunteers, they work in these communities, they go in different areas, meet different people, and therefore they are able to help in terms of uh, bringing the idea to different people in the community. And that means that uh, the, the partnership the community will also, will also increase. Then promote long life reading habits. Yeah, remember we are working in the library and when you bring these uh, volunteers, when you empower them, they are able to spread the message. And when these learners uh, come to the library, they don't just come maybe because of learning stuff, but they are able to come and also read, use the resources in the library to read. Uh, and uh, it means that even the libraries, uh, in terms of the capacity utilization of resources is going up. On that photo, you can see uh, this uh, learning circle that we introduced recently in introduction to computers, and that we are able actually to train uh, uh, the learners on maybe how they can uh, support issues with computer support and all that. You can see they have opened a computer and I'm there helping them maybe to identify some of the internal parts of the computer and all that. So when they see these things, when they interact, and they are able to learn. At least it's making a sense in the, in the community. Okay. 
so what are, are some of the common pitfalls to avoid? And uh, when you look at uh, John Maxwell, he said that a good leader knows the way goes, the way it shows, the way. So we as facilitators, we have to know the way. You cannot just engage these volunteers to go in commission them to run away that you are saying we will never be there. So you have to lead by example. You have to know the way so that you can guide them on which way. Eh? You have to show them the way. Right? So uh, uh, some of the pitfalls that uh, we should be avoiding as the facilitators is uh, clarity. Eh? You need actually to let uh, these volunteers understand what uh, the mission, what is supposed to be done and guide them where necessary, clarify issues, be specific that this is what we want to achieve and all that. Then poor timing. What are you doing? Let me, uh, 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 when is the right time for you to engage uh, uh, these people? What are you expecting them really to do? What are you commissioning them to do? And at what time? So timing is, should be uh, appropriate so that at least uh, you are able to engage all of them and you are able to reach uh, more people. Then targeting wrong group. Which group are you targeting as uh, to, to volunteer? You have to understand these people. Not just everybody can be a volunteer. So ensure at least the people you are targeting that the people who are, are, are good people that who can support the vision and the mission that uh, of the learning center. Don't just take anybody because you might end up taking anybody thinking maybe is a good volunteer, but this person maybe has his or her own intention. For example, maybe you take somebody to help you running some of these programs, you try this person maybe with the institution resources. And at the end of the day you realize maybe these resources they are missing and kind of such scenario. So ensure that at least you are targeting uh, the right people so that they can assist you. Then inappropriate communication methods. Yeah? How do you communicate to these people? What are your body the gestures? Which gestures do you show? Body movement, uh, lack of consultation. Maybe you don't want to consult these volunteers and others. So as facilitator, try as much as possible to avoid such things. Maybe body movement, yeah, and such stuff. Then, what can I do if my volunteers do not become empowered? What can you do? Because you can bring volunteers, but they are not empowered. Maybe Nicole can take me back so that at least uh, I can also engage the audience. So uh, maybe my listeners, uh, we can also contribute and maybe what do you think? Uh, sometimes uh, these people are not empowered. So what can be done? What can you do? Maybe you as a facilitator when uh, these volunteers, they are not empowered. Yes. So maybe a contribution from the audience? Um, earlier you said, uh, which I love, you said that the goal for volunteers is that you should be able to make them smile at the end. And so I would say that if you're not, if someone's not empowered, you should return to that question of why aren't they, why aren't they smiling? What would it take to make them smile? And to me, uh, and it's something you've already said in many different ways, uh, for a volunteer program to work, you need to meet the volunteers where they are, and you need to make sure that you are using the volunteer opportunity to meet their personal goals, and that you're not just saying, oh, you know, the library is awesome, learning circles are awesome, P2PU is awesome, Nakuru is awesome, that you're, you're undertaking the time to understand what this person wants and what they want to get out of volunteering, and then you make sure that you are presenting the opportunity for them in that way then they can smile. So I think that if you're finding that there's the, yeah, the lack of uh, empowerment, um, to me it just is about going back to that question that you've already raised and, and making sure that uh, the goals for the volunteers are aligned with what they want to be achieving uh, as, as individuals. Okay, great. That's great. I uh, agree for that. Maybe any other idea? Well, I just wanted to conclude on the same one. But uh, on my part, uh, as a program, I think we need to, when 
on the start of the program, you need to come up with some kind of the program. So when you think at some point there's some miss for some things that are not working on right, then you need to pull them together, ask in terms of what what is what happening somewhere. So that they may they may, they may get their views, so that they may act on their views so that everything else is transmitted. So at some Looks like we froze a bit, or maybe it's me. Okay. Uh, Kazungo, are you there? Well, I think I'll uh, get us along that way. So maybe you can proceed. Yep. And I'll uh, just before that, uh, uh, as we've had shared that you have to ensure that you make these people at least yes, I have that. Like, yes. You have to contribute again? Yeah, please come up again. Yeah, what, will say will, yeah, what I was saying is that um, uh, this is a program that once you started, you need to come up with some kind of evaluation. You monitor and evaluate. So at some point, you need to come up with uh, maybe after a period of time, see with the volunteers, see how they are feeling, know whether they are happy with the program or not. And if they are not happy, then what do you need to do? Then you need to get the feedback from them, so that you work on their on their weaknesses, on their strength, so that we move forward. Great. Uh, thank you, Koi. Uh, I think what Koi has said, I totally agree with you. That at least you have to ensure to get to uh, know, to interact with these people, to know maybe uh, what are the challenges they are facing. Why are they not smiling? We've had mentioned you have to ensure that they are smiling. So maybe if they are not smiling, it means that they have not been empowered and you have to go back and ask yourself, why are they not smiling? And uh, maybe do an evaluation. But maybe what are the challenges and maybe how can we be able to do it to, 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 to overcome these challenges? So uh, Nicole, I think you can proceed this here. Uh, maybe what is that? The next slide, please. Great. Uh, so, uh, according to us here, yeah, when things are, sometimes uh, things will not work 100%. And uh, what you require is to a facilitator. Just take it slow fast, relax your mind, uh, see a perfect way to approach the whole issue. Then remember you are developing leaders. So, in terms of developing leaders, don't expect everything. Than a hundred percent sure, so they must. There must be some of the challenges in that. So remember that it's not that at least we are also trying to be our. Just like you got muted again, <laughs> our, our sneaky friend Kennedy. <laughs> 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 well, you can hear me now? Yeah, yes. Yeah, and talk kind of. I was saying that. I can hear you. <laughs> I was saying that, that you take it slow. Uh, remember that you are developing leaders, so there is no need to argue or You have that uh, stony face and all that. Uh, and then try to engage these people in a dialogue. Uh, bring them on board, talk to them. Get to understand maybe why why are things not working. No, they have the reasons, and when you have them get uh, them in a dialogue, they are able to share their views, and you are able to know challenges and maybe uh, how to improve on such uh, challenges. Then uh, change your approach. That's another thing that you really need to do. Maybe the, the, the methods that you had used earlier, and they are still that things are not working. It's now high time you have to go back. Drawing uh, box and uh, maybe uh, come up with other ways which, of how you can be able uh, to assist uh, uh, these people. Then consult uh, others. Consultation is also uh, good. Like uh, for instance, uh, uh, in, in Kenya, we have more than 15 learning circles now, and uh, maybe especially maybe for the upcoming uh, learning circles, uh, maybe things when. There are challenges inside them, maybe they, they have to share with other facilitators. Like in Akuru, we are two facilitators and uh, three 
challenges that if we are able to sit down and share those challenges and see the way forward. So consultation is very, very important uh, uh, for us to ensure that uh, these people we are able to help. Then uh, I want to share just a success story. And uh, before I share, you look at that photo there, you can see uh, these are the learners uh, who actually have gone through the, the learning circle that's HTML, uh, uh, interview skills, and the resume writing, and uh, at least uh, our CEO was awarding them the certificate. So you see, they are very happy. So uh, what are some of the success uh, stories that uh, are coming up of empowering these volunteers? You realize that we are able to come up with more learning circles. When you are alone, uh, you realize that you can not do everything. But when you engage volunteers, some of them have been skilled in different ways. And that means you are able to learn more than one learning circle at a at one period. So it's very important to have these people because we are going to open more learning circles. Then we are having more participants. Yeah? Because these are the people, the, the volunteers, they are able to get participants in the community and they are able to bring them. We have the increased library patronage as a library when we read these people with the, the message of learning circle. At the end of the day, they come from the learning circle, but they, are, they also uh, develop that interest of utilizing the library resources. And that means that there's more, uh, uh, there's more uh, usage. Then we have improved library visibility, at least the library, people know that there is a library that's existing somewhere, somewhere, so you realize at least people will know you within the, the community, because this library, the libraries are supposed to serve the community, and when you don't have that visibility, then it means the work that you are doing in the library, you are not doing the right thing, because people really need to know where is the library, and what can I, how can I use uh, this library. Then we have boosted staff morale. Library has become more vibrant. Since we started doing this learning circle, at least even our staff, they are very happy because of this learning circle, and therefore they are able to work, work together. They help us also to bring uh, the learners on board. They are able to also to, to, to make when the learners in terms of uh, clarifying issues, they are aware of what is taking place in the library. So it's also good the facilitators that or involve your, 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 the staff, the entire staff, starting from the security at the gate, so that if a user comes, a runner wants to know the program that we have, it, uh, and maybe you are not around, it doesn't seem that maybe uh, there's nobody to tell them about the running service and all that. So ensure at least you are able to work together with, it, with the staff, let them know what is happening, uh, what is learning circle in the world, uh, so that uh, they can assist even to recruit uh, more people in the learning circle. Then, uh, in doing this, at least people they learn, and after learning, they empowered. At the end of the day, we produce inspired leaders, yeah? empowered community. Uh, we have the empowered community because we are able to engage the community, the volunteers, and everybody at least is able to access this program, is able to benefit from this. Program. At the end of the day, we produce the empowered community. We have what we call the promotion of national cohesion and peace. Sorry for that spelling. <laughs> we have national cohesion and peace. So, in doing that, as like in Kenyan scenario, currently we have political temperatures are high for the presidential elections and all that. But uh, when you bring these people, Nakuru is a cosmopolitan place, and uh, we have people. With, uh, different tribes and all that, but when you bring all of them in the learning circle, at least these are the people who make friendships, they're able to talk what is affecting them, and therefore it promotes the national cohesion and peace. Do you have any, have you felt any resistance from the organization, uh, not specifically uh, Kenyan National Library Service, but any, do you, any organization specifically? What I'm thinking of is we've worked with some libraries who, um, who say, well, you know, it's the library, 
the librarian has to be uh, the facilitator and we can't create space for the learner to be their own to be a volunteer and run their own learning circles because we have to be there in the same room we we can't uh, you know when the library is closed we close it they can't just find their own time you know so it's a lot more of a librarian who has the control over uh, who becomes a learning circle facilitator and who doesn't have you ever found any resistance from the organization or other librarians who've said no, it must be the librarian. It can't be any volunteer. And what have you what have you done about that? Okay, uh, great for that question. Uh, actually, uh, when you are starting the learning circle, that's why I say that uh, the first thing you need to know that uh, to do is uh, let everybody know that uh, when we started this uh, program, uh, first uh, we are able to engage different people, including the CEO, the director of Kenya National Library. So. We brought them and we brought some stakeholders within the community. And the reason why we did this, it was actually to ensure that they own these products. When they own them, at least you are able to survive. But a situation where maybe you don't, uh, you don't uh, involve them, you don't engage uh, these people, you have a trap. But maybe the challenge that uh, I, I faced uh, initially was uh, maybe uh, from few, maybe when the, the participants are coming, they want to like, what we are going to the learning circle. You see, the library, uh, uh, the library, when you enter the library, we have what we call the access fee, whereby uh, every user who is coming to the library, you have to pay 20 shillings. But uh, in our case, uh, maybe uh, the message had not reached all of the staff, and so they were just, they had the message, but they were wondering should the learners or uh, the participants of learning circle, should they pay the entrance in the library to kind of, but at least we are able to solve it up to them. And if somebody is coming to the program, at least try, you know, he or she doesn't need to pay the credit shillings access to you. And together with that, we make some arrangements where we are able to issue them with the, uh, with the pass. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe they come before the end of the letter, they sign uh, where, and they indicate that they are going to the, the learning service. So we are able to identify the learners who are going to learn the, for, for the learning service program. And therefore, uh, it went on well. There's another question from, thanks Thanks for your response, uh, there's a question from Griff, uh, can you explain or have some volunteers explain uh, some of the different roles that volunteers have taken in the learning circles? Are, are the volunteers also learning circle participants? Well, uh, <laughs> I was looking for one of the volunteers, I think, uh, just uh, maybe in a minute's time, but here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to, uh, them to come and talk, and not me talking on their behalf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are shy. <laughs> well, they are a bit shy, but the truth is that uh, we have quite a number of the uh, participants of the learning circles who have actually volunteered to learn the learning circles themselves. Like at the moment we have a learning circle going on and it's being led by one of the volunteers that is uh, Chris. And uh, I think he was here to share his experience. He is coming and I think he liked the learning circle that's why he ended up uh, offering So what they do, we have those that normally volunteer to conduct the learning circles or to guide the learners. And you also have those that usually volunteer to mobilize uh, people from the community to come and join the volunteers. Like we have some different institutions whereby they are able to talk to the students from those institutions on the importance of joining the learning circles. So they help us recruit. They help, us, they help us learn the circles. And because we have Chris here, maybe you can give him an opportunity and tell us. <laughs> it's so Chris is here is one of the volunteers. Hello, Chris. Hello. Uh, I'm Hello. a volunteer and I help the beneficiaries in the HTML 
learning the web, web, website development using HTML and CSS. Then that's Nakuru. Uh, the experience has been good, given that uh, I'm one of the beneficiaries, and uh, I started uh, doing it. And uh, at the moment, I'm using the experience that I got as uh, to expand my experience and uh, as a business in uh, web development. Great, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris, what what makes you smile uh, during your learning circles? Just repeat the question, please. <laughs> what makes you smile during a learning circle? <laughs> uh, the level of interaction between uh, me, who is uh, helping the other stu the students or uh, the beneficiaries. And uh, how we interact, the atmosphere in the class is very friendly, and uh, the reaction of the, uh, those who are listening to me while I'm uh, offering the tutorials. Great. Well, thank you so much. Okay. So can I release him to go and... <laughs> <laughs> He's released. He's released. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Hello, can yes. you yeah. can hear you, Koi? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, my question is on um, the beneficialism. And we talked of good groups, uh, library users, school leaders, opinion leaders, and, 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 and the rest. So my question is on now, uh, if you find all these tri kind of groups, you've mentioned that these are organized groups, and that those are... Uh, guys who are just around there, like uh, those guys who are uh, maybe addicted by drugs, maybe those guys who are the street children, those are not organized groups. Have you found a way of maybe engaging these guys so that they can, they can find something better instead of just coming around there doing nothing or doing uh, things that are not useful for their life? Okay, uh, thank you for that question, Koi. Uh, one of the areas that we focused uh, as your Maybe, maybe just to explain to you, Nakuru, uh, we have uh, one of the uh, largest slums, it's called uh, Ronda slums, and uh, this is where you'll find uh, the young people especially doing a lot of things, maybe some of them with drugs and all that. So what we do, uh, ourselves as facilitators, we are not able, we don't know these people, but we, we try to see who, who can help us access these people, and uh, 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 we had uh, volunteers who helped in terms of mobilizing. Uh, we, we, we take maybe people like the chiefs uh, or the leaders in, in those communities we are, who are able to talk to such and uh, they are able to bring them uh, to us in the library. And uh, it's good because some of them, uh, we got them from the slum area where maybe they didn't go to schools because of school fees and other, you know, the life of the, the, these uh, slum areas. And that means that we are able to bring them and to teach them uh, maybe things like uh, how they can use a computer, how they can do the coding and all that. And we, we consider they all come and uh, they benefit. Yeah. Great. Um, any other questions? Uh, we have um, Miriam is on the line and also from Jennifer from uh, the Literacy Center. Any uh, other questions? I know a few people are, have already left, but if there's any final questions, uh, we can address them now. No? Okay. Oh. Um, so, uh, w with that, um, I'd like to th say thank you so much, uh, Josek. I really appreciate it. I know you put your contact information there, so I'll just share that with the rest of the group right now. Um, but I really appreciated this, and I really hope... Uh, I hope that we can kind of uh, we can write up some of this uh, this information because you had such such great rich material uh, to share with other people. So that those are uh, that's Joseph, Joseph's uh, contact information uh, if you need to ask him more questions, uh, or you can visit him in person in uh, uh, in uh, it's Nakuru, right? Right, Joseph? In, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's Nakuru. Great. Um, okay. Great. Well, unless there's a, uh, any any other questions, we'll hang around here. 
um, for a bit longer. Uh, if you have any other questions about learning circles or if you just want to chat with, uh, with uh, Josek a little bit more, um, feel free. Um, I'll be hanging out here for the next while. But if not, see you later.